Roles and Responsibilities of Patient Site Staff. Typically, a patient site is an outpatient clinic or hospital where the referring provider is located. In many cases, the patient or patient site is located in a rural or underserved area. I truly believe that using telemedicine is part of the future of rural health. And so it's important for us to learn how to do this, to do it well, to use our resources well, to match the technology with the need. In order to conduct high quality and successful consultations at the patient site, there are four major roles that need to be filled. Although titles may vary, every program needs to address clinic operations and coordination, clinical direction and oversight, patient presenting, and technical support. The size of your program and available staff will determine how these roles are assigned at your organization. Although many programs often use one person for multiple roles, we recommend that you be careful not to overload one person with too many tasks and responsibilities. A telemedicine coordinator typically handles the coordination of clinic operations. This person serves as the primary liaison with the remote clinician site or sites. He or she serves as the administrative point of contact, representing the program to the site's administration, its medical staff, and the local community. The telemedicine coordinator supervises local telemedicine personnel, arranges for appropriate space, supervises the scheduling of patients for telemedicine consultations, and interacts with local referring physicians as necessary to follow up on telemedicine consultations. This role typically also oversees the financial aspects of the telemedicine service at the patient site. A telemedicine coordinator, that's what we're calling it, owns the patient engagement function in a way that brings patients into the process and is engaging and outgoing from a marketing standpoint and encouraging doctors and nurses to use the system. Similar to the remote clinician site, a medical director will provide clinical direction and oversight to the telemedicine program. The role of medical director for telemedicine is critical to the successful operation of the program. This person's enthusiastic support of telemedicine provides credibility for the service at the local level and can often be persuasive in convincing other local physicians to refer their patients to telemedicine, even if it means changing their referral patterns. Buy-in is key. You've got to get everybody on board uh, and with a strategic plan. Um, and the number one thing you need is a local telemedicine champion. And you'd be surprised you know, how it can just kind of get go by the wayside really quick if there's not somebody there kind of championing it, being the cheerleader. The patient side presenter works with the remote clinician to present the patient. This person introduces the patient to the remote clinician, explains the visit to the patient, and assists the remote clinician during the visit, operating any needed diagnostic tools. The presenter is usually tasked with providing and documenting the required written and verbal patient consents and ensuring that the patient's charts are available. The patient presenter makes sure that the equipment is operating correctly, that a connection to the provider site can be made, and that all necessary tools and diagnostic scopes are available and operating correctly. The patient presenter must be familiar with the operational protocols be skilled in clinical interactions with patients, and be highly knowledgeable about equipment operation and basic troubleshooting. This person is the extended eyes and ears of the specialist at the other end of the connection during live interactive consults. When store and forward equipment is used, the clinical presenter captures the digital images as well as the necessary clinical information to forward to the specialist. The clinical presenter is often responsible for any chart documentation required at the patient site. Similar to the staffing requirements at the remote clinician site, a telemedicine program at the patient site will also need to identify a staff member who is responsible for responding to technical issues that may arise during, before, or after a telemedicine consult. It's important to keep other members of your organization staff apprised of telemedicine program services and activities. What is the commitment from the administration and from the medical staff to telemedicine, in our case telepsychiatry? If that commitment's not there, then there's, you're wasting your time. Making sure that you're communicating through the entire process, letting them know about the progress that you're taking, 
uh, keeping people informed, keeping them involved. The main thing that you want to do is make sure that you have conversations with your leadership first. Getting their buy-in, getting their input, getting their suggestions on where you need to start is, is always very important. The chief executive officer and the organization's administrative team should also act as the program's champion, encouraging others to support and utilize your telemedicine program. This group will participate in program development, understanding the impact the service will have on the local provider community and on their own facility. The director of nursing participates by estimating the nursing hours required, types of expertise needed, staff training requirements, and whether or not personnel can be shifted from other services or if new hires will be necessary. Training is important in telemedicine programs and will be required for staff at both the patient site and the remote clinician site. Many organizations use existing training personnel to assist with the development of telemedicine training, while other programs may use outside training sources. The trainer identifies who needs to be trained and what they need to learn to confidently perform job-specific activities. In addition, this person assures that new staff are trained and existing staff retrained as necessary. The business office needs to understand the billing processes for telemedicine and how they differ from normal billing practices. For patient sites, the billing is generally limited to the facility fee, but may be more extensive under contractual arrangements where the local facility assumes the billing for services role. The business office usually processes any applications that may be required for telecommunications discount programs. The staff truly believe, the staff, the clinical staff believe that this is the right thing to do and they personally are vested in the program and personally want to learn how to run the equipment well, present it well to patients, explain it to patients and those staff do a tremendous job 